Hello YouTube, I am Jay and this is going to be part 5 in my series on how to build a no water change tank. And in this part, I will explain to you how to use plants to help your filtration. Now people have an intuitive understanding that having plants in the tank helps with filtration, but I am yet to see anyone who can coherently explain exactly and how they work and what you have to do to maximize that filtration that you can get out of your plants. So that is what I am going to address in this part. So let's get started. So as I've explained in previous parts, the source of the pollution is the food, and then your animals turn it into poop, which contains a variety of stuff. And in the previous parts, we just focused on the nitrates. But nitrates, as I've said, is not the whole story because there are stuff other than nitrates that are in the food that can accumulate in the tank and collectively all of that can be get rid of by plants. So as I explained in filtration basics, food contains um, solids. Well actually the poop, which comes from the food, contains two components which needs to be filtered which are solids and the dissolved toxins. So everything that is dissolved the plants can get rid of. So plants are really the ultimate solution because they can get rid of everything. So if you have plants, you can get rid of everything that has a potential of accumulating in tanks. So how do plants do that? So let's just follow the nitrogen because the nitrogen is the most critical factor here. So let's just track that. So as I explained before, it is the food that contains nitrogen and it is specifically the protein that contains nitrogen. That's because amino acids have nitrogen in them. So the food protein is a source of the nitrogen. And let's think of the animal as a kind of factory. It's a factory that converts that protein into these raw materials here, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Specifically, the animals will end up producing ammonia in case of fish, urea in case of turtles, and this ammonia gets converted to nitrite and nitrate by other um, animals, which are the bacteria. So animals think of them as factories that convert the food protein into ammonia and nitrite and nitrate. That is where, how the, um, energy, um, the nitrogen flows. And this factory is powered by the food. The energy in the food is what powers this factory. And what are plants? Plants you can think of as other factories that take these raw materials. Now this is waste for the animals. But for plants, these are raw ingredients. These are the nutrients they take up. So they take these raw materials and they process it in this factory, which, are, which is a plant that we're representing. So the plants are factories that convert these raw materials into plant protein. And what powers this factory? It is a factory that is powered by light. So that is what plants do. Plants take these stuff out of the water and they convert that into plant protein. So plants growing is what's going to remove the stuff from the water. So this is how plants work. So you have nitrates like this in the water and if you have a plant in there, the plants are going to take in those nitrates to fuel its growth and it's going to utilize the energy from light to do that. So it's going to use the light energy to remove the nitrates. And the plant is going to grow as a result. It's going to get bigger and the nitrate is going to get reduced. It's going to get smaller. So that's how plants work. So here's the critical thing that a lot of people sort of miss. Um, people have an intuitive understanding that plants are going to help with filtration. But people tend to think that it's just the plants just chilling in the water that just does it. Well, no, it's the plants growing that's going to help with the filtration. So let's take a look at these three tanks here that are exactly the same except for the plant population. Which tank will have the greatest amount of filtration going on? And most people, because they just think that plants just chilling in the water is going to clean the water, will choose this one. Because, hey, it's got the most plants in it, so it's going to have the most filtration. But actually, it will be something more 
like this. Because as I said, it's not the plants just existing in the water, it's the plants growing. That plant has to grow to eliminate the nitrates from the water and turn it into plant protein. So this, pl this tank is too crowded. It has too many plants in there, there's too much competition, the plants are not going to grow very well in here. Whereas this, there's plenty of space to grow, and there's um, enough plants for that maximum filtration, and this tank just has too few plants. So it's the plants growing that matters. So as time goes on, and you start off with a small amount of plants, the population is going to grow and grow and grow, and then when it starts to get too crowded, that growth is going to slow down. And that's going to reduce the filtration until eventually it evens out. And at this point, the plant's dying is equal to the plant's growing. And the dying plants are going to release those ammonias right back. All those plant proteins are going to break down once the plants die, and the ammonia is going to come back right back. So at this point, there is zero filtration. There's no filtration going on here, if you have that point. And this is where there is maximum filtration. So you want to keep your plants in this range where they are growing very well and as fast as they can. So once you get the tank fairly crowded with plants, you are going to want to take some out and keep it at a density that is good for the plants to grow. So taking out the plants is the critical part here. So in conventional filtration, you have food going in, and what comes out is dirty water. That is how conventional filtration works. You balance the input with the output that is the dirty water. In a planted tank, you have the same food going in, but instead of removing the dirty water, what you can do is you can remove the plant biomass. So instead of removing nitrogen, by removing the water, you can remove nitrogen by remo removing the plant proteins from the water by just trimming the plants and cutting them off and keeping them growing. That is how plants work. And here's another thing that I uh, that you need to understand about how plants filter. That is, the light is very important because, as I said, the way plants um, filter water is you can think of them as factories that remove all of these nasties, nitrogen and phosphate, from the water and turn it into plant biomass. And what powers this factory? Of course, it is light. So if you can't power this factory, this factory is not going to remove this stuff from the water. So if let's say we have these two tanks here that are exactly the same. And this has a small amount of light and this has a lot of light. Obviously, this is going to have more filtration because the plants have more light to use, they have more power to use to remove all those nasties from the water. Of course, um, there is a, a point where the light becomes redundant. So if you have no light, you're going to get zero filtration. The filtration is going to go up and up and up until it reaches a plateau where light becomes more light becomes irrelevant. So you're going to want to keep it somewhere in this maximum range of light to get the maximum amount of filtration for your tanks. So that is how much light you're going to need. So basically this is um, how plants work. Um, instead of removing the water, you're removing the plants. And the maximum growth is maximum filtration. It's not just maximum amount of plants or number of plants. It's that you have to keep them at a density where they're growing fast, and you have to give them enough light so that they can grow fast. So that's critical. And what I'm doing for my turtle tank is, um, oftentimes you're going to have some sort of creature that is not compatible with plants. Some snails can't do it, and goldfish. You, It's really difficult to keep plants with these guys sometimes, because some snails will eat plants, goldfish eat pretty much all plants, and of course, as you know, I keep turtles, and turtles pretty much demolish almost every single plant there is. There are very few types of plants that you can keep with turtles. So what I do in this case is, instead of keeping the plants within the tank itself, I have, some, I have a different filtration compartment 
where I have the plants and I have the turtles. So I have them separated like this. And this is called a refugium. You can see a lot of these in um, salted tanks, um, saltwater aquariums. But you can do the same thing with freshwater. That's what I do. So you can keep a refugium to separate the plants from the potentially destructive animals. So that's what I do. So that is how plants work um, in terms of filtration. It's not the plants existing in the tank, it's the plants growing that does the work. And by removing the plants, you can get away from removing the water. So that is basically how plants work. And now, in the next part, I'm going to discuss some specifics about how to exactly use plants, what types of plants are good for filtration. So um, stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching.